He ended up in the hospital not knowing where he was. So then he escaped from the hospital and he actually had police chasing him all around San Francisco after he left. What's up guys? My name is Levi and this is Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding. And this is 14 things you didn't know about Alien Workshop. As you guys know, stick around for our final point, our 14th point. It is the craziest one. You don't want to miss it. As well, every single week we're doing comment of the week. Stay tuned till the end. In this episode, we're going to cover a ton of stuff on the Alien Workshop. Things like the team, the videos, crazy facts, and so much more. Stay tuned. The start. Chris Carter and Mike Hill were friends in Dayton, Ohio. They moved to California to be a part of the skateboard industry. Mike Hill is working for GNS Skateboards in the art department and he gets a job for Chris Carter as a team manager for GNS. Neil Blender was a top tier pro for GNS at the time. He was known for blazing his own path and his homemade skateboard graphics, which was really unheard of at the time. The three of them end up touring together and becoming good friends. One summer, Neil jumped in with him on their way back to Ohio. On the way, they start talking hypothetically about starting their own skateboard company and breaking free of the grips of the California skateboard industry. They were also constantly chatting about aliens and different conspiracy theories. In 1990, they break free and move from California back to Ohio to start Alien Workshop. They had a P.O. box in Xenia, Ohio, which had a population of under a thousand, which is ultimately the polar opposite of everything that is going on in the skateboard industry at that time. For the whole first year of them being a brand, all of their ads were obscure and didn't have skateboarding in any of them. The brand was financed by Chris Carter and Mike Hill. They also had some money invested by a guy named Jimmy George, who owned Cal Skates, a skateboard distribution company. Jimmy George would later get bought out by Carter and Hill. Although Neo Blender was a huge part of the inspiration of the conception and the growth of the brand, he never actually had any ownership in the brand because he understood the risk of owning a skateboard brand. Carter said it was such a struggle in the early years that he actually had to have a part-time job just to keep the company going. The name. They wanted to get people thinking when they named the brand. Carter said in a Chromeball interview, they drew inspiration for the brand from a friend of theirs who was deep into conspiracy theories. This is before the internet. And they said at his house, he had a huge bulletin board that was all strung and covered in conspiracy theories. There was also that punk rock ethos of the 1980s with spreading messages about resisting authority, thinking freely, and doing what you want. He had proof that UFOs were real. The name for the brand actually came from a story that was told by this friend. It was that, that the US's stealth bomber planes were actually made in an alien workshop by Alien Technologies. At that time, Carter and Hill were actually so into conspiracy theories that they bought gold, bought land, bought generators, so that they would be fully self-sufficient if anything did actually happen. The logo. The logo was designed by Mike Hill in his basement. When the brand was just in the idea zone, they would use to meet at Denny's to talk about it. And so naturally, he pulled inspiration for the logo from the Denny's logo and the Marathon gas station logo. He originally created the logo by drawing it on amber lith film, hooking it up by a coat hanger, and then shining a desk light through it. He then traced the shadow that it cast on his desk. This light is what caused the distortion in the writing in the Alien Workshop logo. There's rumors that if you flip the Alien logo on its side, it reads Neil B for Neil Blender, but those rumors haven't been confirmed that it was done on purpose. Rob Deerdeck. Rob Deerdeck and Dwayne Petrie come on as their first big name amateurs. After their first video came out, Memory Scream, Rob Deerdeck turned pro. He then got his first huge royalty check. It was for two American dollars. Not long after that, Alien approached Rob and said, if you want to move to California, we can guarantee you $1,000 a month. So Rob moved out there and then became the Alien Workshop house where a ton of team riders lived and stayed. Rob went on to have a legendary skateboard career. He came out with a ton of DC Pro Model shoes. He had amazing video parts, so many of them. And of course, he came out with a few shows on MTV. Say what you want about modern Rob Deerdeck. But back in the day, he was putting out legendary skate parts and pushing the limit as far as what people could do on a skateboard. Although Dwayne Petrie retired earlier, he went on to be a musician and eventually scored the music for Alien Workshop's Minefield video, Memory Scream. 
Their first video, Memory Screen, came out in 1991, less than a year after the brand started. Mike Hill did most of the filming and creative directing for the project. He got a few Super 8 cameras from some secondhand stores, and then he handed them out and he said, go film everything that you think is cool on the trips that we do. Time code. In 1997, they released the video, Time Code. It introduces Josh Kalis to the brand, as well as it has a standout last part from Lenny Kirk. Lenny is born into a nice Christian family in North Carolina. He then explodes onto the skateboard scene, riding for Alien Workshop. Unfortunately, he suffered severe head trauma while trying to 50-50 a dumpster, and he slammed into his head on the ground. He ended up in the hospital not knowing where he was, so then he escaped from the hospital, and he actually had police chasing him all around San Francisco after he left. His friends say this drastically changed his personality, and I guess he's never been the same since. Pro skateboarder Carl Watson said that he ran into Lenny on the street while Lenny was robbing someone with a sawed-off shotgun while preaching the word of the Lord, saying, this is what God wants, he's providing for me, and then he would take the money. Unfortunately, Lenny wasn't the same after the fall. Lenny ends up in jail on the California's three-strike rule with a kidnapping charge. He then was released from jail in December 2019, uh, right before COVID. What a freaking yeah. guy. The team. Over the years, Alien Workshop has been really good at curating an amazing skateboard team. They've had team riders like Rob Deerdeck, Bo Turner, Josh Kalis, Fred Gall, Brian Wenning, Jason Dill, Ave, Heath Kirchart, Dylan Reeder, Grant Taylor, Anthony Popolardo, Jake Johnson, Gilbert Crockett, Ardo Sari, Mikey Taylor, Steve Barra, and more. Dinosaur Jr. Dinosaur Jr.'s frontman, Jay Maskus, was introduced to Hill and Carter through Neil Blender. He let them use his music in their very first video, Memory Screen, as well as Time Code and Minefield. Over the years, he's done collabs and runs of shirts and boards with Alien Workshop. Habitat Skateboards. In the latter half of the 90s, Alien Workshop goes into its second phase. After some of the early riders move on, Jason Dill, Anthony Van Anglin, and Danny Way join Josh Kalis and Rob Deerdeck on the team. As the brand and the team grow, in 1999, Joe Castrucci gets the go-ahead to start another brand under the umbrella called Habitat Skateboards. Photosynthesis. In the year 2000, this orange cassette tape changed the world. Photosynthesis is released and it's put together by Joe Castrucci. The video features Anthony Popolardo, Ave, Brian Wenning, Danny Way, Josh Kalis, Jason Dill, Mark Appleyard, Tim O'Connor, and Rob Deerdeck, obviously amongst others. In this video, we see Habitat mixed in there. Jason Dill has last part in the video, skating to Radiohead, which is so iconic and it solidifies him as a legend in the skateboard world. This video also features additional filming by Bill Strobeck, who filmed all of the Supreme videos. Minefield. In 2009, Alien Workshop releases Minefield by Greg Hunt. The video had standout parts from Ardo Sari, Jake Johnson, Grant Taylor, and Heath Kirchart, amongst others. Not long after that, they also drop the Alien Workshop section in the Cinematographer Project, which was very well received. I'm sick of being social engineered. It's not funny! In 2013, Alien Workshop paid homage to their roots in conspiracy theories and did a collab board with Alex Jones and Infowars. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! The graphic said divide and conquer. In the book, Agent Provocateur by Seb Curiel, Hill says that in that collab board graphic, it basically says, no matter who you vote for, it doesn't matter. The buyout. In 2008, the world is shocked that Alien Workshop was bought out by Burton. In an interview, Chris Carter said that the skateboard industry was growing so fast and that they felt limited as a small company. So the buyout by Burton allowed them to do greater and better things. During this time, they came out with collabs with Andy Warhol and a Keith Haring series, which online today sell for crazy amounts of money. Rest in peace, Alien Workshop. In 2012, Rob Deerdeck announces that he's buying Alien Workshop from Burton. After a few years of the company kind of suffering, Rob Deerdeck buys it, and then after 20 months of him owning it, he sells it off to Pacific Vector Holdings. At this point, after Rob Deerdeck sold the company, Dill and Ave announced that they're leaving. They've been on Alien for over a decade, 
and they're definitely the DNA of the brand at this point. They have a meeting with Deer Deck, and then May 1st, 2013, they announce online with a handwritten note that they're leaving Alien Workshop. The note thanked Deer Deck, Hill, and Carter for everything that they've done for them and saying that this will always be the greatest times of their lives. At this time, Alien was starting to crumble. Heath Kirchhart had recently retired, Grant Taylor left for Antihero, Dylan Reeder had left to FA, and Mikey Taylor and Steve Barra had also left. After the letter was released online, Dylan and Ave decide to start a board brand called FA. This was based off of a clothing company that Dill had owned for years. In 2014, Pacific Vector Holdings is on the verge of bankruptcy, so they cut all spending, which makes Alien Workshop basically disappear. Over the couple years after that, Deer Deck somehow acquires Alien Workshop back. Rob ends up giving the brands back to their original owners, which say what you want about Rob Deer Deck, but it's a pretty cool move because he basically took the brands and sent them home. He takes Alien and gives it back to Mike Hill, who's basically been the mastermind behind the artwork and a lot of the culture at the brand for a long time with 10% of it going to Chris Carter, who was his original business partner. Chris Carter also got reflex bearings and tools, which is probably the biggest skate tool in the world, and he gives Habitat back to Joe Castrucci, Alien Headquarters. The brand lived in Vermont and California, but after it was given back to Mike Hill, he took it back to its humble beginnings in Ohio. The company headquarters are now actually in a restored nuclear military bunker. It's actually the bunker where they worked on the detonator for the Manhattan Project. This whole thing's ironic because it was built on conspiracy theories and now they're back in some sort of same zone. The future is looking bright for Alien Workshop in the hands of Mike Hill again, where they released their recent video in 2015 called Bunker Down. The brand has seen a roller coaster of sizes and directions, but we're so happy it's still alive. So keep supporting it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Levi. Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. And you guys just watched 14 things you didn't know about Alien Workshop. Make sure you guys are out there supporting your local shops. That will keep skateboarding alive. I got a question for you guys. Let us know below. Who's your favorite team rider that ever rode for Alien? Do you think Heath Karchart retired too early and what should he have done? And do you believe in aliens? Have you ever seen a UFO? Let us know below and support us by liking and subscribing. Every other week we're doing a 14 things and the ones in between we've got content for you. The best way to support us as a local shop in Canada is to like and subscribe to our videos. Comment below, let us know what we should review, what we should do 14 things on because we want to work with you to find out everything we can about skateboarding because we're just a couple of kooks on the ride together. Now stay tuned for our comment of the week. Yo, comment of the week. Spicy one. Guys, it's spicy. Frick, your password. <laughs> it just turned okay, off. One, two, one, okay, it's from Mist Ninja. You commented on one of our videos, and guess what? We're best friends, whether you like it or not. He said, the people who talk smack about Levi are 101% right. Well, I've got news for you, math boy. That's not a real number. Also number two, yes, there's tons of smack to be talked, but I will take off my shirt and my pants and run at you in my underwear, sweaty, diarrhea in my pants, and hug you, and then you will have to deal with the consequences. Bye.